on behalf of the Greater Lowell Technical High School Committee and our faculty and staff, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our graduating seniors, their families, and guests. My name is Jill Davis, and I have the honor to serve you as the Superintendent Director of Greater Lowell Technical High School. Our commitment exercises are the highlight of each school year, and we are very happy that you are with us today to share in this important celebration of student success for the Class of 2021 Construction Cluster. Now, please join me as we honor our nation with the playing of the national anthem. I'd like to thank our longtime musician and friend, Mr. Ralph Fanaro, for contributing his talents to enhancing our celebration this morning. At this time, I would like to recognize and introduce our platform guests. Please welcome School Committee Secretary from the City of Lowell, Mr. Lee Gitchier. Senior Class Advisor, Mrs. Kimberly Fabrez. The second ranked student of the Class of 2021 and our salutatorian, Zachary Varzia. And the first ranked student of the Class of 2021 and our Class Valedictorian, Lexi Cotto. Also, would all the veterans, military reservists, and active duty members of the armed forces please stand to be recognized. Thank you for your service. At this time, please join me in a moment of silence in memory of senior plumbing student Cross Leticia. Good morning, class of 2021. You made it. I am, I am honored and privileged to celebrate with you today this tremendous milestone in your lives. Today we honor 12 years of your hard work the studying, tests, projects, early mornings, and late nights. And we honor everyone who got you here, your family, your friends, teachers, counselors, coaches, and community. This last year and a half was not the year that you envisioned about high school. The world was turned upside down by a global pandemic. 
Yet in a time marked by fear, you were fearless. Embracing remote learning, keeping up with your studies, many of you while working at the same time, inspiring each other to keep going, demonstrating grit, resilience, strength, and, and determination to get you to this moment today. Please do not forget about all the experiences that have brought you to this moment. Hold on to them. The laughs, the tears, the friendships you've made, the lessons you've learned, the knowledge you've gained, and skills you've mastered, and all the hardships that you navigated. These have all shaped you into the remarkable individuals that you are today. Value what you have learned and look forward to the new experiences that lie ahead. Your high school graduation is an incredible achievement. It marks the beginning of a new chapter of your life, a time to reflect and establish new goals and objectives for your future. Your years at Great Old Tech have prepared you with the core values, knowledge, and technical skills to be able to choose a path that aligns with your unique talents and skills, one that makes you happy and allows you to fulfill your dreams and your goals. No matter what path you choose, whether it be going out into the workforce, attending college, or joining the military, I ask that you always strive to reach and carry with you two of the most important values that we worked hard to model and instill in you during your years at Greater Lowell, respect and responsibility. Respect others' differences through your words and actions. Even during times of conflict and disagreement, remember, we as people are all deserving of respectful behavior and simple human kindness. It is okay to disagree. It is okay to challenge others' ideas and, and opinions. Do it with respect and dignity and follow the single most important rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. Above all else, respect yourselves. Take care of your mind, your body, and your soul. Think about your choices carefully and take responsibility for the choices that you make. Stand up for what you believe in and find your voice and let it be heard. Own your successes and your failures. When something doesn't work the first time, get back up, brush yourself off, and find another way to try it again. Always do your very best. You can't, always do the very best you can with what you've got and you will never go wrong. Finally, appreciate your parents, guardians, families, friends, and community. Hold on to your value system, your work ethic, and most importantly, your humanity, and always be the good citizen you want to see represented in the world. Congratulations, class of 2021. You are great old technical high school graduates. You are Griffins, smart, capable, and confident. And we are so proud of you, each and every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the class of 2021 salutatorian, Zachary Varzia. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I don't think we need to go louder. Good. Uh, it is a great honor to be here today before all of you today. I would like to start by expressing my appreciation to all the teachers, staff, friends, and family that got me here. I would also like to thank the chairman of the school committee, Kempton Giggy, and his colleagues, Superintendent Jill Davis, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Michael Barton, 
uh, and our commencement speaker, Noel Lambert. As a salutatorian, it is my responsibility to help our class reflect on their four years in high school. Let me take you back to freshman year. We came to Greater Lowell not knowing each other, and we were a bunch of strangers thrown together. The only thing we had in common is that we chose to come to a technical high school. The important word here is choice. We chose to leave our familiar school and friends because we all dared to do something that was different. We wanted not only academic skills, but technical skills as well. Over the course of the first year, we came closer to finding ourselves and our calling as we made our way through exploratories. We ultimately landed in the train, though. We ultimately, super proper. We ultimately landed in the trade that aligned with our passion. It's hard to characterize sophomore year, except to say it was awkward. But I can say this. We grew both as individuals and as a class. Most of us became more serious with who we wanted to become. Some of us joined clubs, some of us joined skills, and some of us played sports. Our shop week started to define our friendships and lay the foundations for our technical skills. Then came junior year, the year that possibly defined us as a class. The first two-thirds of the year, we knew what we wanted, who we were. We were teens with skills, teens with jobs, teens with friends, and teens with an inkling of who we were to become. Then COVID hit, as sudden as a car crash. We thought it was just going to be a long break. The only thing that was true about that, it was long. It was like the dark ages. The light of who we wanted to become was slowly getting snuffed out. We had seemed to be coping decently well with our temporary separation. However, COVID continued through the summer. We had started to grow weary of the situation. We longed to return back to our classrooms with face-to-face -face learning. We wanted to actually see each other. Then we started senior year. We were faced with a seemingly impossible task, strictly remote learning. This led to feelings of isolation, boredom, depression, and anxieties for many of us. We had trouble connecting with the teachers and their material. Many of us wrestled with staying awake. It was also during this time we tried to cope with the shocking loss of our classmate, Dominic Cross Leticia. Somehow we managed to struggle through the cold, dark winter months. We continued to join our Google Meets, we completed our assignments, and we accepted the monotony of remote learning. For many of us, senior year seemed like a lost cause. However, we are not a class that is lost. Because we refound each other on May 17th, the day we came back together in the building and as a class. Our journey of who we wanted to become was reignited, and here we are together at the Songus Arena, about to receive our diplomas. What ultimately defines the class of 2021 is, we've gone through this much together. Now let's see what we can do on our own. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you my classmate and your valedictorian for the class of 2021, Lexi Coda. Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lexi Cotto, and I'm really honored to be up here addressing my fellow peers as we move on to our next journey. I would like to start by expressing my appreciation to all the teachers, staff, friends, family, and fellow students who helped me get where I am today. I would also like to thank the chairman of the school committee, Kempton Giggy and his colleagues, Superintendent Jill Davis, Assistant Superintendent Michael Barton, and our commencement speaker, Noel Lambert. I'd like to take a minute to recognize the faculty of Greater Lowell for giving their all each and every day, especially during these extraordinary times. To the teachers and coaches, thank you for pushing us to do our best each and every day and building relationships with us that will, that will last for a lifetime. I don't know how you can go day in and day out dealing with the attitudes and drama of high school students. That deserves a special award. I would like to personally thank my guidance counselor, Mr. Bladis, for believing that being named valedictorian was possible from the very beginning, in dealing with my endless emails, one-on-one -on -one visits, and anxiety through the whole process. For that support that you gave me, I will forever be grateful. To all the parents and guardians, 
We thank you for the love and support that made it possible for all of us to be here today. I know I personally couldn't have done it without the support of my mom, dad, and stepdad, so thank you. To my fellow Griffins, we made it. As some of us move on to college, trade school, the military, or straight into the workforce, don't let your journey end here. Life is full of experiences, so take advantage. Let's not settle as so many people do. Apply for that job, enroll in that school, travel, travel the world if you can, but don't stop here. You only get one life, so do the things that make you happy and put a smile on your face. Not everyone's journey is going to be the same, nor should it be. Don't waste your time comparing yourself to the success and accomplishments of others. Success is flexible and has no one definition. Here we are, graduating, and from here on out, we make our own choices and control our own destiny. So make good choices. Your goal should not be to be better than anyone else. Instead, strive to be better than you used to be. Don't let people pressure you with a timeline of success. Things will happen when the time is right. In the end, an accomplishment is an accomplishment, no matter how long it takes to happen. For everyone sitting in this audience, look beside you, look behind you. Everyone is going through something you know nothing about, whether it be grieving, abuse, or their own personal struggles. We as a class all grieve the loss of our classmate and friend, Dominic Letizia, who left us too soon. He is in all of our hearts today. As Robin Williams once said, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. So be kind, always. If we all live by this, this world would be a much better place. As we move on and become assets to society, let's, not, let's remember that not everyone is going to have the same mindset. People are entitled to their own opinions, and these opinions should be respected, whether you agree with them or not. Opinions in life are full of diversity, so let's allow our difference to create a more well-rounded world. If everyone had the same values and outlook, this world would be perfect. But guess what? Nothing and no one is perfect. I came across a fitting quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and he states, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we'll perish together as fools. When we leave here today, let's celebrate our similarities, differences, and accomplishments, and look forward to what the future holds. I wish you all the best of luck in whatever path you may choose. Once again, congratulations to the Greater Lowell Technical High School Class of 2021. Thank you. I would now like to take the time to introduce our commencement speaker, Noelle Lambert, U.S. Para Track and Field National Team member. Noelle Lambert was born in Londonderry, New Hampshire. She had a standout freshman lacrosse season at UMass Lowell, earning America East All-Rookie Team honors. During the following summer, Lambert suffered a life-changing injury, resulting in the amputation of her left leg above the knee. Lam Lambert never let this severe injury defeat her. She returned to the lacrosse field in April of 2018, just 18 months after her injury, where she caught a pass in front of the net and fired a shot past the goalie for a goal. The emotional celebration with her teammates that followed represented a culmination of all the time and effort she had dedicated to getting back on the field, defying the odds of a devastating injury. After graduating in 2019, Lambert made the switch from lacrosse to track and field for the U.S. Paralympic National Team. She placed fourth in the 100-meter race at the World Para Athletics Championship meet, setting a U.S. record for the race with a time of 16.31 seconds, which earned her a spot on Team USA for the Paralympics that will compete in Tokyo in 2021. In 2018, Lambert founded the Born to Run Foundation, which aims to provide amputees with prosthetics that will allow them to run again. She believes she can be a source of inspiration and help children who have a limb amputated because she knows what they are going through. She has been given prestigious awards since her accident, including the Boston Celtics Heroes Among Us Award, the America East Inspiration Award, and most recently, the L'Oreal Paris Woman of Worth National Honoree. So welcome, Noelle Lambert. Hi everyone, my name is Noelle Lambert, currently on the U.S. Paralympic National Track and Field Team and currently training for Tokyo 2021. 
Thank you guys so much for having me here today. I'm honored to be a part of your graduation as you take your next steps to embark on your new journey. Uh, it really wasn't too long ago that I was in your exact same shoes. So I really just wanted to pop on here and send you off with a few lessons that I've learned from my journey right after high school, which really ended up taking many twists and turns that I really never expected to happen. Uh, just like all of you guys had happened with COVID last March. So growing up, I was a three sport athlete. My dream in high school was to play Division I lacrosse, and I earned myself a Division I scholarship to play lacrosse at UMass Lowell. And freshman year, I started every single game. I was a leading point scorer, and I was on the all-rookie all team for my conference and player of the year for my, for my team. I was so in love with lacrosse and really hopeful for my athletic future, and I really didn't know what I really didn't know at that point that my life was going to change forever. And so the summer following my freshman year, I traveled to Martha's Vineyard just for vacation with a couple of my friends. And I got onto a moped. I've never personally ridden one before. And I lost control and I sideswiped the jump truck. One minute, um, I mean, right before it, I'm having a blast, headed to the beach. The next minute, I am on the ground looking at my severed leg and realizing that my life was over and I really thought that I was never going to be able to walk again let alone play sports and play lacrosse so while I was so upset and and scared for what was going to happen I really made the commitment to myself that I wanted to do everything in my power and that I could to get back to what I was doing I really didn't want to let this accident define the person that I wanted to be or the person that I wanted to become. And so, I mean, about two and a half months after my accident, I received my first walking prosthetic. And at that point, I thought that I'd be getting my everyday walking leg and I'd also be getting a running blade so I could return to practice that next week and be ready to play for my sophomore season. And because of all of that, uh, I was really not prepared to realized that prosthetics actually cost about ten to fifty thousand dollars specialized ones so if I ever wanted to run again or play lacrosse uh, I needed to have a running blade donated to me or I needed to come up with the funds on my own and so I knew that I really wasn't going to be playing my sophomore year because it really wasn't going to be um, realistic so I decided to make a new role for myself being a student a student coach and I was at every single game every single practice and I really just wanted to show the support that my teammates gave me while I was in the hospital and show that support and give it back to them during their sophomore seasons. And about nine months after my accident is when I finally received my first walk and my running prosthetic. And I was just completely nervous to put it on. And I remember the second I did put it on, I was being harnessed in a treadmill and I really couldn't uh, run for more than... 10 seconds at a time without being fatigued or tired and it was just really a very uncomfortable feeling um and so i thought that i was never going to be able to play again but i just kept showing up every single day yes there were days that i wanted to quit but i just made it a mission of mine to kind of prove to all the doubters that never thought i'd be able to um and i actually had my teammates and my coaches believing in me when i didn't believe in myself and so, I mean, that's exactly what my coaches did. They treated me like everybody else. They threw me into every single practice, every single drill. And I started slowly but surely getting better, getting more comfortable. And I just remember one day at practice, I was very self-conscious. I didn't really want to be there. I was hiding in drills. And that's when my assistant coach stopped practice and started screaming at me in front of everybody, telling me that if I didn't want to be there, that I needed to leave and I needed to quit because the effort that I was putting in, my teammates did not deserve that. And I certainly knew that I could be doing a lot more work and I knew that I needed to be doing twice as much work as everybody else because I had one less leg. And even though um, getting playing time and everything really wasn't on the top of my list, I just wanted to return to the field. I didn't care if I had the ball on my stick, I didn't care if I was scoring, I just wanted to be a part of the team and help contribute to winning games. And that's exactly what happened. I kind of found and made myself a new role. And I started getting a little bit of playing time. And then about halfway through my junior season, my coach, uh, during when I was on the sidelines, my coach said the words, Noel, go in. And I just remember 
thinking, okay, this is the moment. I just need to go out there, not worry about the crowd, not worry about the background noise, just go out there and help contribute to the win. And I mean, jogging on the field, I just remember blacking out. Um, but it was really cool. In my first game ever, I was able to score a goal. Um, and I was also the first above knee amputee to ever play a collegiate sport. And when I look back on the video, the best thing about it isn't the fact that I scored, it's the reaction that I got from my teammates and coaches. And I mean, I really wouldn't be in that situation if it wasn't for them. Every single day, they were always pushing me to be better, never never treating me as somebody who has a disability. And so I just always was so grateful for them because I mean, it just really paved the way and made me realize what being a true teammate is and what being, and what being a true person and a great person is. And so, I mean, throughout all of that, returning my senior year, it was like my accident never even happened. I was at every single practice, every single drill, and I was just a part of the team. And that was the biggest, that was the biggest and most important thing. <clears throat> While obviously, um, it really wasn't how I wanted my college career to go, I also just didn't let it de be defined by that one small moment. And now when I look back, I'm grateful for everything that happened because it has gotten me and paved me a way to where I am today. And while it was the hardest thing that I ever had to do, <clears throat> I just want to share with you all the mentality and the lessons that I personally learned from, from my journey and my recovery. And one of the biggest things is perseverance. <clears throat> Attitude is about perspective, how you look at things, more importantly, how you choose to look at things. Minor setbacks only help you get better and they only help you get stronger. Let my story be an example to never give up and that anything is truly possible. I came back to the field when nobody thought I could. And I know this pandemic and these situations have not been the easiest, but as a class, you have all persevered to achieve this huge accomplishment. And that is something that you should be very, very proud of. Determination and drive are what have gotten us past our own finish lines in this in this whole journey of mine. I mean, me personally, it was recovery and lacrosse. For you guys, it's your diplomas and the work that it took to get there. Success isn't magic. I mean, people on the outside right now are just looking at you getting your degree, but you know all the hard work it hard work it took, and all the late nights and hours of studying and and just hours and hours of thinking that you couldn't do it, but you persevered and you got through it. And so it just makes the success afterwards so much more rewarding. Um, and n keep this in mind uh, going into your next journeys. Um, always keep the people and the relationships and things that are important to you close because they are the people that are going to make your journey worth it in the end. And they're also going to help you get there and get through life's biggest challenges. I relied on my family as a source of strength through my challenges. And you always have to be open that your destiny may look different than others, but you just gotta stay focused and you gotta stay loyal and diligent. Um, resilience and determined, but also being patient. Not everything comes in one night or one day or one hour. It could take months, it could take weeks, it could take years, but always continue to have in the back of your head, your biggest goal. I obviously entered college with the dream of making history on the field with, with my play and was honored with the national recognition my freshman year, but with my accident, my perspective shifted and I had to redefine my idea of making history. And I ended up being the first above knee amputee to ever play lacrosse. And that is something that I will super forever be proud of um, but I also want that to happen for other amputees and other people going through difficult times. Um, you really want to let never let anyone or any fear stop you from achieving or reaching your aspirations and goals. I know sitting here you all have a little bit of fear about what the future holds and not really sure what you want to do with college or with your everyday lives and that is perfectly fine. I was scared every single step of the way from my injury to recovery to training to getting back on the field, but you can't let that fear be a handicap. Instead, you just have to embrace it and you have to use it as motivations. And the moments that I was scared, I knew I was fully embraced, fully embracing my next step into my next journey. And if there's anything that I have learned through it, 
um, or anything that I've learned or has taught me is that you will reach your greatest pursuits in life one form or another and no one has ever failed trying if you're truly passionate about it you will be more motivated to succeed and i allowed my passion which was athletics to drive me through the long recovery and you always have to choose happiness and entertainment and joy of any other idea and just remember you can't just do something and not apply yourself 100% because if you don't, then your dreams or your aspirations or your goals are never going to come true. You always have to stay true to yourself and believe you can and you will. After my senior year, I was approached by someone from the U.S. Paralympic track and field team and I had never personally done an individual sport before, but I was I was ready to take on the challenge and I just remember signing myself up for the first track meet there was and I showed up and I realized that I was competing against the reigning national champion and that the entire U.S. Paralympic national track and field team was going to be there and the head coaches were all going to be there looking at me. And I just used that as motivation. Yes, I was scared and nervous and I wanted to throw up, but I was just so excited to show myself and show off my capabilities. And not only in my first race, did I qualify for the U.S. Paralympic national team, but I also beat the reigning national champion. And that is honestly because of the work that I put in two years prior competing against people with two legs. And I was able to then compete at the world championships in Dubai. And there I placed fourth in the world and I set a new U.S. record. But this isn't all coming easy. Every single day I'm, pu I'm putting in that work, I'm putting in that dedication to show and to prove to myself that I can do it. And I am now training every single day for the Paralympics in Tokyo this summer. And hopefully I will be competing in the in the 100 meter. And I'm just, I'm very excited. But I mean, with everything that happened with COVID, Tokyo was postponed an entire year. And I just knew that I was gonna look at it as, okay, I have a whole extra year to train and get better. And hopefully when I go out and do compete this summer, all that hard work will be paid off. And so, I mean, if you had asked me starting as a freshman at UMass Lowell Lacrosse and that in six years, I would be record-breaking Paralympic track athlete, I would have laughed. I had no idea where my journey was gonna take me. And frankly, nobody does. We all face challenges on our own journey that we aren't expecting and that set us back from our goals. It is how we learn and how we grow from these challenges that define us. I really didn't let my accident ruin my life. I kept pushing and kept fighting, and that is the mindset, mindset that you should always have when going into your careers and dreams, and once you leave today, life will throw obstacles at you, I promise you. But to quote Michael Jordan, obstacles don't stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Just know, you just know that you have to figure it out and how to climb it, go through it, and work around it. You can all persevere no matter what you are faced with. I am living proof of that. As long as you continue to follow your heart, pursue your dreams, and remember that, I promise you all your hard work will pay off. So thank you so much, class of 2021. I wish you nothing but the best and the long life opportunities ahead of you. I would like to take a moment to thank Noelle Lambert for her participation in uh, today's ceremony and for her words of inspiration. Thank you, Noelle. And at this time, it is my great honor to introduce the Assistant Superintendent Principal, Mr. Michael Barton, for the awarding of the diplomas. Thank you, Superintendent Davis. Good morning. I am honored and privileged to be here and very proud to announce the Greater Lowell Technical High School graduates from the class of 2021 Construction Cluster, the beginning with a carpentry program. Nathaniel R. Berry. Dennis J. Barassa. Yes. 
Christopher R. Brady. <laughs> Jacob M. Kamir Drolet. <laughs> Racine R. Chung. Aish Shaliz M. Cruz. Aaron E. Derry. Michael S. Dumont. Terry B. Err. Randy S. Fournier. Jaden A. Hernandez. Emily R. Howard. Jamie J. Jessam. James V. Lynn. Vision C. May. Martina F. Mora. Jack A. O'Shea. Mateus I. Pascal. Ezekiel J. Rodriguez. Harrison P. Roy. Ashanti M. Ruiz. Aiden C. Susi. Dana P. Thompson. Philip L. Zyroth. Now for our electrical program, Ryan M. Allard. Henry E. Altenweg. Wesley R. Burke. Drew W. Carbono. Jimmy Chirk. James R. Cusenza. Christopher C. Gillis. Aaron M. Gruel. Corey R. Hoey. Charlie K. Kalungi. Aiden P. McGuire. Colby A. Molinaro. <laughs> Javian E. Nieves. <laughs> Daniel A. Normandy. <laughs> Matt.
Matthew Normandy. Nathan S. Oon. Nathan Pitch. Cole T. Propelka. Victor M. Ramirez. <laughs> Kyle E. Reardon. <laughs> Jacob J. Reed. <laughs> Dimitri N. Reyes. Rabiel J. Rivera. Mario M. Silva. Gianna L. Silvar. Alan Som. Colton N. Strickland. Kyle Tran. Aiden J. Trinidad. Our heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration program students, Jaden E. Algorin. Dawson R. Bedard. <laughs> Miles K. Berthoom. <laughs> Joseph C. Bertrand. <laughs> Roberto J. Candelaria. Brian E. Caputo. Brandon Cardoza. Elijah J. Curtis Burton. Peter DeSalt E. Dinge. Stephen J. Foley. Samuel P. Francis. Aiden J. Hanna. Christopher L. Langone. Samuel J. Mancia Lemus. <laughs> Visna Men. Katie M. Nieves. Matthew T. Oaks. Daniel A. Rivera. Michael J. Santiago. Alberto M. Silva. Matthew M. Silva. Matthew R. Destiny M. Silva. Matthew Uvanian. Matthew Uvanian. <laughs> Class of 2021 Masonry Program.
Je... John D. Albaron. Arthur G. Amato. I would like to invite to the stage State Representative Colleen Gary to award the next diploma to her nephew, Peter V. Anaya. Corey N. Aruda. Brian Camargo. Silvio R. DiMartino. Daniel J. Dominguez. Aiden L. Goodwin. <laughs> Ali Ohashi. Devin J. Marku. Dominic E. Masoda. Nicholas Mata. Vincentine Nicolau. Alexander Posada. Jordan R. Sun. Austin M. Williams. Painting and Design Program graduates, Julia E. Alves. Mariana Costa. Taina M. Cruz Rivera. John F. King. <laughs> Olivia R. LaRoche. <laughs> Nazaria A. Lewis. <laughs> Alvin N. Muchai. Ajadis N. Pinero. Jose J. Robles Cintron. Kaylee K.K. Soto. Nayeli E. Vasquez. Jordan C. Wallace. Our plumbing program, Kevin J. Armstrong. Colby A. Bladis. Anthony E. Canella. Chris L. Claudio. Michael J. Cook. Tyler W. Corey.
Taylor R. DeGrofe. Jake R. Doyle. Dylan Fors Hood. Timothy A. Gath. Bobby C. Grover. William H. Guptill. Genesis R. Hudzik. Thomas R. Kelly. Jacob M. Lambert. Julia K. O. Lee. Alan Mafra. Julius S. McDougall. Liam R. McManus. Renato S. Mello. Miles V. Pena. Derek C. Plowman. Michael D. Riley. Andrew U. Ruiz. George L. Saldana. Colin J. Saunders. Jacob R. Trzinski. Thomas M. Willis. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2021 Construction Cluster. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage, at this time I would like to welcome to the stage Senior Class Advisor Ms. Kim Fabrez for a moment of reflection. Will the class of 2021 pause with us for a moment of reflection. Over the past week, Mrs. Sear and I were talking about how many of you before us started your high school career in my classroom and participating in freshman class activities way back in August of 2017. It has been an honor and our privilege to be a part of your first chapter in high school and now today, closing that book as your senior class advisors. This year has been tough, and you all have proven that you are tougher. You have accomplished your dreams by sitting here today, by setting goals, and working toward them. We honestly couldn't be more proud of you. You have shown the world what it means to be Griffin Strong. Please don't forget the lessons that you have learned at Greater Lowell. Inspire, challenge yourself, be mindful of the people around you, and give praise. Make a difference in the lives you touch. Remember to try new things even when you think you may fail. You will not be judged by how hard you fall, and you will fall, 
but how well you pick yourself up and persevere. To all the families and friends with us today, we want to thank you for sharing your precious gifts with Greater Lowell Technical High School. To our graduates, thank you for being you. We wish you good luck, never stop reaching for your dreams, and know that we will miss you. Congratulations, class of 2021. You are Griffin Strong.